Hi Vogue, it's me, Allie here. Welcome to my bathroom. <laughs> Just kidding, this is so not Vogue. This is closer to a FaceTime call between long distance friends. So, hey girl, almost new. Um, I'm glad you finally picked up. Today I'm doing this whole recap thing. Um, I'm gonna be doing makeup in the background, like my everyday makeup routine, but I'm not gonna really be talking about it because it's honestly not very innovative and also doesn't always look very good, but I'm hoping it looks good today. But I'm just kind of doing that for like visual stimulation if you are watching the video and need that. Um, but feel free to have this on in the background, like a podcast, or like you're on FaceTime with your friend um, and do other stuff. Or um, you could even honestly just mute this tab, watch something else, come back and make sure you did all my video retention if that's what you wanted to. I can't believe I just told people to mute my video. I honestly, it's been so long since I like just casually talked to the camera that I can't really remember how to do it. But um, yeah, I uh, thought we should do a recap video, an update video because I don't know, I, I filmed this a little bit ago and I didn't really like how that take went. So I am refilming it actually. It's the second time I'm filming this. But I considered just scrapping the idea and not doing a recap video and I just didn't, it didn't seem right. You know, I went through my whole first year of college and I didn't really say anything to y'all. I've been busy at school studying and being an academic weapon and it didn't seem right just to continue on like I've been doing this consistently or something. I don't know, I just didn't, I didn't, it, it, I've uploaded so many videos from like my vault where like my Valentine's Day video was literally from 2023 but uploaded 2024. Um, my childhood room tour was uploaded in December but filmed in July. So like the continuity of everything is just like, it's out of sorts, it's out of whack. So for my sanity, we're doing this. Um, and, and yeah. Also, YouTube has always been kind of this video diary therapy session platform for me. And I feel like I get closure of like a chapter of my life once I put all my thoughts and ideas into some sort of creative structure like this. Um, and it isn't until then that like that is finally concluded. So that's why we're doing this today. It's been a while since we've done one of these. So, I mean, yeah, um, I guess we'll just go ahead and start. Okay, so I guess we start off with first semester, right? So I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be genuine, like I always am on this channel. Going into my first year of college was very intimidating, more intimidating than I originally thought it would be. I am naturally a very shy person and I was really hoping that like welcome week, everybody, you know, would wanna make friends and it would feel like, okay, an extrovert's gonna adopt me. It's gonna be great. But then that didn't happen. It sort of felt like either everybody was getting into their friend groups very quickly and was kind of standoffish or like not necessarily standoffish. I guess that's like my perception, but it really was like they're not openly like welcoming everybody with open arms. I don't know. It just felt like I didn't get into a group quick enough and all my doors were kind of closing and um as the weeks went on, I didn't have like that close friend group I was hanging out with every day, like a lot of my friends from home or a lot of the people in the hallway I saw would have. And um, I think this is like a common occurrence that you don't really get to see because if someone's lonely, why would you share that on social media, right? So I'm, I'm sharing that with you, even though it's very personal because you know, just in case like that's how your experience is, like you are not alone in that. You know, it's very likely that people's college experience is going to not fit 
the stereotypical mold all the time. And so if you're not having the same type of fun that you get to see online, um, I don't know about all of you, but personally, I was, I was feeling pretty insecure um, my first semester, like first month, second month. I just remember like looking on Instagram and being like, wow, you know, even the people I hate have found people just like them. Why can't I find people just like me who I can grow close to and everything like that? And that's not to say that I didn't meet people, but it didn't feel like, like, you know, we were very close right away. And, you know, not having like a close support system, I remember it just kind of made me feel more homesick. I always thought like growing up that I would get out of my small town, go to university out of state, and instantly everything would click and instantly I would be happy and instantly like I would never look back. And that's just not what happened. That was not my story. So first semester, I was kind of a loser. Um, objectively, I felt like a loser um, sometimes because I was just studying all the time. I didn't really have friends and I, was alone for most of it and i remember having a lot of like conversations with myself like what if we didn't make the right choice of where to go what if i should have gone here what if i should have befriended those people what if this this that that what if i made a mistake so then i asked myself okay in may would we have made a different decision why did we choose pace in the first place and so I thought and I was like, okay, well, I chose Pace because it was out of state. It was in a prime location near New York City, near my extended family, far enough from my immediate family that I would be independent, but not so far enough that I had to take a plane home. And I thought, okay, well, it was a good nursing program. It has a very inclusive mottos it's very diverse and that was very important to me like non-negotiable and this and that and that and this and i was like okay well does it still check off those boxes and the answer was yes the climate although i wasn't so involved in the social scene was welcoming and it felt different than high school and it felt you know like a place i could learn and gradually become a part of like a real part of and those were important questions to ask because i was trying to rule out if i needed to transfer because my other friend at the time she actually dropped out of school because of the social climate so i was trying to determine if this was a place that i could truly grow in and be happy in or if it wasn't a place i could tr truly grow in and be happy in and i came to this this realization that even though I was alone, I wasn't lonely. Like I never really felt like really down in the dumps. Like I felt homesick sometimes. I felt like a loser sometimes. I felt insecure and maybe my social anxiety was growing, but it wasn't like, I don't know, it wasn't hopeless. I felt kind of content despite the situation. And it was this really weird epiphany I had where I realized, yeah, I might have no friends right now, but I, I think this is weirdly the happiest I've ever been. You know, I learned to be content being alone, being with myself. I learned to understand myself better with these internal dialogues and monologues and um, thinking through all these things. You know, going to an out-of-state school, it's intimidating because you don't have your support system of your immediate family. You don't have your support system of your hometown friends. You sometimes have nobody. And I think I had to learn how to have nobody to really become my own independent self. Like genuinely, this is the first time I really have had to like figure things out all on my own. and. It was, it was sort of empowering in that way. And I'll repeat it again, like this was like the happiest I've been in a long time and maybe ever in my life. Um, Cause I, I grew up like 
in elementary school, I'm not gonna lie, I was a pretty emo kid. Elementary school and middle school, like, I <laughs> I was down on the dumps. Um, I don't know, like, in elementary school, I always felt like I wanted to be somebody else. And in middle school, I always felt like I had to pretend to be somebody else. And then in high school, I was finally sick of pretending, but I didn't feel comfortable being myself, so I hid it away from everybody. And then in college, I just, like, this is so cliche, but I didn't feel any of those, that pressure anymore. You know, like, I felt like I could finally be whoever the fuck I wanted to be and become whoever the fuck I was meant to. So despite me arguably, objectively being alone, I felt happy. So that was kind of the end of first semester. I learned how to be alone. I learned how to be independent. And then we get into spring semester. And that's when I learn now, okay, let's learn to be social. Let's do a little bit of exposure therapy because as I mentioned, like my social anxiety was kind of getting bad and it, it is something I struggle with sometimes more than other times. And it, it's really a weird thing, but in spring semester, I became a little bit more social um, through hanging out with my sweet mates and hanging out with my roommate. Me and my roommate, Esther, we are like really close now. Me and my sweet mates were, I would consider us friends. And through them, I found some other people who I would consider friends. It's kind of hard because I definitely have like attachment issues. Like I would consider a friend anybody I had more than two conversations with, but I know not everybody's like that. So I kind of, use friend timidly because I don't want to put a label on it. I, I tend to value people more than I think they value me very easily, which sometimes leads to me getting hurt. But besides that, um, you know, not putting labels on any friendships, I found people who I could hang out with, who I went out with, and I found kind of this balance. So I would say first semester, I learned how to be alone. Second semester, I learned how to balance. I was taking more difficult classes and I learned to balance that with going out and also with staying in. Um, you know, learn how to balance when I needed to take a break and that meant having fun and being outside and when that meant having fun and being inside and being alone because as much as I love to go out dancing i also love to stay in fucking crocheting that's something i <laughs> learned this year too um but yeah so just finding that balance you know i i would say i still want to develop even closer relationships at this point like i'm not fully to my actualized college self yet but i'm starting to be and I think that's a big development and I have really high hopes for next year because of everything I've learned internally this year um and and yeah so that's like my deep personal emotional talk about what college has been like in my brain sorry I'm just doing my eyeliner real quick <laughs> Now, as far as what college has been like, event-wise... Event-wise? Event... Event-wise. I meant event-wise. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> um, as I said, first semester, mainly in my studious, homesick, little bit of a loser, but happy era, I, um... Let's see, I went back to Delaware for Halloween, which was really fun. And I spent it with my hometown friends, which I think was the perfect thing I needed at the time because they really empower me and I'm glad I have them in my life, love them. And I also love everybody I've met in college who, um, you know, has shown me kindness and who has become a friend um, of mine. So love showing love to all of you too. But yeah, first semester was kind of boring. 
other than that, I was like literally writing essays all the time, mainly about Taylor Swift. Like I wrote essays about Taylor Swift and I actually won an award for it, but I was like, I'm not going to this dinner for this. This is kind of, this is a bit much even for me as a Swifty. I don't know why I did all that. But <laughs> then we got into spring semester, as I said, going out a little bit more. Um, and then I concluded it off with um, me and my roommate Esther. We actually went to the Driver Era concert, which was so, so, so much fun. I actually really love the Driver Era. Like I wasn't there just for Ross and Rocky. Like I was there for the music, um, but also they looked fucking hot. Um, but it was the first time I had ever, A, been to a concert by myself with no, like, adult supervision, and B, been in a concert on the floor, which, like, general admission, which was so intimidating, and I fully expected to be like, oh my goodness, we waited hours just to be in this hot, sweaty cesspool, and I hated it, I had this experience, I had fun, and I'm never going back though but instead in reality it was oh my god we waited for hours just to be in this hot sweaty cesspool i loved it i, I had fun i experienced it and i cannot wait to do it again like i so got the high like i so understood and it was like a roller coaster like the second the set was done i was like when are we going again so I really want to see the driver air again. I really want to go to more concerts and and everything like that. So we'll see. Hopefully, I get to. Um, I'll be honest. Like I'm pretty broke right now, but you know, somehow I always find money to be a fan girl. Not always money to you know feed myself or to dress myself, but always I find money to be a fan girl. Um, but anyway. Yeah, so we went to the Driver Era concert, and then um, the semester kind of concluded with um, finals and a couple more fun times with people, and then saying goodbye. And and then I came here, and I was very productive starting the summer. I was so fucking on my shit. I was like, let me unpack this day. Let me go. Um, clean out my closet, donate stuff this day. And then I even filmed this video um, that I had to refilm today because I didn't like the first take. But I filmed the video and then I applied for jobs. I interviewed for a job, I got a job and I was all set to do my onboarding. And then I got COVID. So that's where we're kind of coming off of. Like I literally had the worst case of covid too like i think it was a specialized virus just for me because literally i was around my friends i was around my family nobody else got it but me and not only did i get it i was like out for an entire week with it like bedridden fever um just like it was not good but yeah, since that's over and done with, I'm hoping to kind of get back on my shit, get back when I'm not working my part-time job and making bank, I wanna be making videos. So like, I have like so many videos I wanna make this summer and I hope I get to. So make sure you subscribe. <laughs> um, she was quick. But yeah, so that's, kind of where we're at now the whole catch-up and perfect timing because i'm done with my makeup um let's see did i miss anything else oh also i want to start a new channel <laughs> as i said anything to be a fangirl um i do always find the money to be a fangirl and i also will always find the time to be a fangirl so um, even though I have a million other things I need to do this summer, I think I'm gonna start a compilation fan channel. So if I do make it, it'll be linked in the description. Um, but I got inspired to do that because I'm in a Degrassi rewatch. Actually, I'm pausing my Degrassi rewatch to watch Sex in the City. But I started a Degrassi rewatch and I was like watching all these compilation scenes and I was like, I want to make one of those so 
I probably will make a Degrassi compilation. I also watch a lot of Smosh compilations, so I'll probably make a Smosh compilation there. And it's just gonna end up being like, whatever the fuck lives in my head rent right free, I'm gonna finally like make all these compilations about it for mainly me so that when I feel like going back to it, I can very easily. But yeah, so if you wanna subscribe to that, that would be cool as well. Yeah, um, that is it for today's video. I mean, we, we talked about everything. I think, um, let's see, uh, my emotional state, having no friends, getting friends, um, my growth and personal well-being. Um, we talked about concerts, we talked about fandoms. We didn't talk about love, because there is none. Um, <laughs> Look, okay, so I'm trying to find my future bridesmaids in college. I'm not so set on finding my husband or wife or spouse in college. I, you know, it doesn't have to be in college, but if it is this one, dude, I wouldn't mind it. Ah, all right, okay. We should shut up now before we say too much. Um, This is what the final makeup look looks like it actually okay don't mind my pimple but other than that moo looks pretty good today um yeah i'm gonna go and edit this video right away before i have any other thoughts about it and end up pre-filming it for a third time so um if you didn't enjoy this video i'm gonna end it now i'm gonna do an outro i feel like i've been rambling and rambling and rambling when we we're supposed to end it like five minutes ago but i'm done now so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, um, leave a comment, um, subscribe if you think you want to see more. And with that, there is nothing left I have to say, but bye.